Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions on mechanics from October-November 2022, paper 2, variant 2. In this lesson, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding and also you can have better understanding of these questions and also better understanding of this topic. In order to get maximum benefit from these videos, the best way is to pause the video, do questions by yourself, and then check your answers with my solution. If you follow this you will improve yourself quickly and you will have better understanding of physics let's study together let's improve together in today's class we are talking about october november 2022 paper 2 variant 2 and total time for this exam is 1 hour and 15 minutes and total mark for this paper is 60 you need to answer all the questions on this paper on second page of exam paper you can also find values of some constants and maybe you need value of some constants constant for some calculations in your exam. So if you need value of any constant, you can come to this page and you can find the values. It's very important to understand that values of some constants are given to you and you can find those values on second page of your exam paper. Let me highlight the constants you need for AS physics. For AS physics, you need these constants. So maybe you will see some of them on your exam paper. So if you can remember values of these constant, it's wonderful because as a physics student, it's important to remember these constants. If you have forgotten any value of any constant, then you can come to this page and you can find the values. On second page of exam paper, some important formulae are also given to you. But these are not all the formulae you need for AS physics. So it's very important that you remember rest of the formulae or you need to understand how to derive them. Because when you derive a formula, you understand the physics behind that. And that is what you need for understanding of physics. So try to derive formulae by yourself. But if you have forgotten any formula, you can come to this page and you can check for that formula. For question number one, part A, we need to state what is meant by work done. A typical type of question, you need to understand how to state this. Work done simply is equal to the product of force and displacement. And displacement has to be in direction of force. So simply we can say W is equal to FD. W is equal to FD. So work done is the product of force and displacement in direction of force. So this is how you can write down your answer. So this is what you need to write down for the answer of this question. Let's move on to the second part. For part B, we need to use the answer to A to determine the SI base units of power. SI base units of power. So first thing we need to understand how power is linked with work done. Power is simply is equal to work done, P for power. This is simply equal to work done over time. So we can write down power is equal to work done over time and work done is equal to force time displacement over time and now we can write down si base units for the force force we can also write down this is equal to m a d divided by t now we can write down si unit si unit for mass is kg so as a unit for mass is kg and as a unit for acceleration is meter per second per second and for displacement is meter and for time is second now we can simplify this one so we can write down this is kg meter square and we have s to the power of minus 2 and we can write down s to the power of minus 1 so finally we can write down this is kg meter square s to the power of minus 3 so this is si base unit for power kg meter square s to the power of minus 3 this is how you can derive si base unit for power for part c it is given to us the maximum useful output power p of a car traveling on a horizontal road is given by p is equal to v cube times p v is the maximum speed of the car and b is a constant for the car we have value of p we have value of b in si units and we need to calculate value of v so we need to calculate value of 
v so we can make v the subject so we can say v q this one will be equal to p divided by p as we need to calculate value of v so we need to take cube root on both sides so simply we can take cube root on both sides now simply we need to plug in values value of p is given that is 84 kilowatts so this is 84 kilowatts divided by value of p that is 0.5 six and we need to take cube root of this one cube root simply means one over theory and now if we solve this one our final answer up to 2sf will be 53 meters per second so this is the speed of the car and this is our final answer up to 2sf for the second part we need to determine the absolute uncertainty in the value of v but v is given to us and v is equal to p over p to the power of one by theory. So we need to calculate absolute uncertainty in the value of V. So first of all, we can calculate the percentage uncertainty in V percentage uncertainty so the percentage uncertainty in v has to be equal to the percentage uncertainty in p plus percentage uncertainty in p and this has to be multiplied by one by theory because the power of this one is one by theory so we have to multiply by that percentage uncertainty in p is given that is five percent so we can write down this is five percent and percentage uncertainty in b is seven percent so here we have seven percent so we need to add then we need to divide so we will get in this case 12 12 divided by 3 it means we will get 4 percent so this is percentage uncertainty in v and so now simply we can write on delta v by v the percentage uncertainty in this one this is equal to this is equal to 4 percent I mean this is equal to 4 so we need to find in this case delta v delta v simply will be equal to 4 divided by 100 multiplied by v and value of v we have already calculated in part 1 so we can say this will be equal to 0 0.04 multiplied by 50 theory so in this case our final answer up to 1 sf will be equal to 2 so simply we can write down this is plus minus 2 meters per second because absolute uncertainty we have to write using 1 sf so that's the reason we have written this one up to 1 sf and this is our final answer for question number 2 it is given to us a spherical balloon is filled with a fixed mass of gas the small block is connected by a string to the balloon as shown in figure 2.1 the block is held on the ground by an external force so that the string is vertical the density of the air surrounding the balloon is 1.2 kg per cubic meter the upthrust acting on the balloon is 0.071 newtons the upthrust acting on the string and block is negligible we need to use Archimedes principle and we need to calculate radius of the balloon so for this question up thrust is given to us and density of the fluid is given so simply we can start with up thrust so simply we can say in this case up thrust this is equal to density of the fluid times g times volume of fluid displaced that in this case this balloon is inside the air means the volume of fluid displaced is equal to volume of balloon because this is fully submerged so we can say this is density of the fluid and this is the volume of fluid displaced so we can also write on here this is volume of fluid displaced so it's better to understand up thrust this formula is very important now simply in this case we can plug in values what values are given to us we have value of up thrust that is 0.071 and density of the fluid is given that is 1.2 and value of g is 9.81 so here we can simply write down v this is volume of fluid displaced v we need to calculate radius of the ball so we can little bit rearrange we can write down volume in this case will be equal to 0.71 divided by 1.2 times 9.81 so from here we can get value of volume but we need to calculate radius of the volume so we can write on formula first radius of the volume this is spherical in shape so simply we can say this is 4 by 3 pi r cube and this will be equal to 0 0.071 
divided by 1.2 times 9.81. Now we need value of radius. So simply you can cross multiply. So in this case, we will have 0 0.071 times 3. And this one will be divided by 4 pi times we have 1.2 times 9.81. We need value of r. So we have to take cube root on both sides. And now you can calculate value of radius. And value of radius in this case will be equal to 0 0.11 up to 2SM. So this is value of radius. And this is how you can calculate. So the final answer up to 2SF has to be 0 0.11. In this case, we need to understand because raw data, it has least number of SF that is equal to 2SF. So this one has 2SF. This also has 2SF. So that's the reason our final answer we have also written using 2SF. For part B, it is given to us the total weight of the balloon string and the block is 0 0.053 newtons. The external force holding the block on the ground is removed so that the release block is lifted vertically upwards by the balloon. Calculate the acceleration of the block immediately after it is released. So in this case, simply question is asking us acceleration. So we need to understand the net force acting on the block vertically upward so we need to find out that net force and then we will divide that net force by mass of the balloon string and the block and we can find out value of acceleration so first of all let's look at forces acting on this balloon there are two forces acting on this balloon so one force is acting vertically down that is the weight weight of the block string and balloon that is given to us so we can write down here 0 0.053 newtons and up thrust is acting on the balloon up thrust in this case is greater than the weight so that's the reason this balloon will accelerate vertically upwards and value of up thrust is given we can say f u up thrust is given that is 0 0.071 071 newtons and we need to find the acceleration so simply in this case acceleration will be equal to f net divided by mass of the system divided by m mass of the system i mean this balloon string and block system f net simply we can find out from here that will be equal to 0 0.071 minus 0 0.0 five three and we need to divide by the mass mass of the system but weight of the system is given to us weight of the system so we can calculate mass of the system mass of this system mass will be equal to weight divided by 9.81 so we can write down weight divided by 9.81 weight is 0 0.053 newtons divided by 9.81 so in this case we will get value of mass that will be equal to 5.4 times 10 to minus 3 kgs means 5.4 grams will you get so simply we can plug in this value here now it has to be in kgs 5.4 times 10 to minus 3 kgs so we can find out value of acceleration that will be equal to 3.3 meters per second per second up to 2sf because in this case raw data is given up to 2sf so we will consider least number of sf in given Data. That's the reason our answer has to be up to 2SF and this is our final answer. It's very important when you write down your answers in exam, write down all the steps because if your answer is wrong but you have done the right steps, still you will get C marks. So always write down all the steps. Far part C, it is given to us the balloon continues to lift the block. The string breaks as the block is moving vertically upwards at a speed of 1.4 meters per second after the string breaks block briefly continues moving upwards before falling vertically downwards to the ground the block hits the ground with a speed of 3.6 meters per second assume that a resistance on the block is negligible we need to consider motion of the block after the string breaks and we need to calculate the height of the block above the ground when the string breaks very nice question and is a typical type of question you will see this one in many past papers you will see this type of questions in paper one you will also see same type of questions in paper two so understanding of this question is very important first of all we can draw the ground here imagine that this one is the ground 
So this one we can imagine this one is the ground and the string breaks when the block is at this point. So we can also draw this line here. It means the string breaks at this point. Then the speed of the block and balloon at this point is given. The initial speed is given to us that is equal to 1.4 meters per second. So simply we can label this one 1.4 meters per second. It is also given to us the block goes upward. Even if it is not given in the question, you need to understand this block at this point will not stop because it has velocities it will continue moving upwards it will reach a maximum height so block will go like this it will reach a maximum height and at this point its speed will be zero and we can say this is u and you can say this is v at the top at the maximum height v will be zero and after that this block will start falling downwards so it will hit the ground and the speed when it hit the ground that is given and that speed we can say is v v is equal to 3.6 meters per second and for this question we need to find out this height means this height we need to find out question is asking us to calculate height when the string breaks so this height we need to calculate and also we need to understand it is given to us a resistance is negligible so there is only one force acting on this block and that is gravity so simply we can say acceleration of this block will be equal to g because only one force is acting on this one and that is gravity so we can say this is 9.81 meters per second per second so we have initial speed initial velocity we have the final velocity and we have acceleration so we can find out displacement in order to calculate displacement we can simply use v square minus u square this is equal to 2 a s we need find displacement and displacement so s will be equal to v square minus u square divided by 2 Okay. But we have to be very careful in this case because we have direction of u up, direction of v down, and direction of a is also down. So in this case, we will take down is positive. So we will take down is positive. So our displacement will be positive. You can also take up is positive. So your answer will be negative. So in this case, we will take down is positive. If we take down is positive, so we can say this velocity will be negative. This one will be positive. Acceleration also will be positive. So now we can plug in values. Value of v we have that is 3.6 square and we have value of u that is minus 1.4 square and this is divided by 2 times value of g that is positive 9.81. So if we solve this one we will get our final answer that will be 0.56 and this answer will be positive because displacement is down and we have taken down is positive so you will get positive answer in this case. If you have taken up is positive positive the answer will be negative and so the final answer for this question is 0.56 up to 2SF because raw data has least number of SF that is equal to 2SF. So this is our final answer and this is how we can approach this type of problems. Typical type of question, we can also use long method but this is a smart way to answer this question. For the second part, it is given to us the string breaks at time t is equal to 0 and the block hits the ground at time t is equal to capital T. On figure 2.2, we need to sketch a graph to show Show the variation of the velocity v of the block with time t from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to capital T. Numerical values of t are not required. Assume that v is positive in the upward direction. So it simply means that we need to take upward direction as positive. And we have value of u that is equal to 1.4 meters per second meters per second and this is vertically upwards and we have value of v that is equal to 3.6 meters per second and this is vertically downwards and acceleration in this case is equal to 9.81 means is equal to g and that is equal to 9.81 meters per second per second and this is also vertically downwards and so we have taken up is positive we have to take up is positive because question said up is positive so this value will be positive this one will be negative this value also will be negative. We also need to understand the gradient of velocity against time graph is equal to acceleration. So in this case acceleration is equal to negative 9.81 it means the gradient has to be negative and the magnitude of the gradient has to be equal to 9.81. Now based on this one we can write down the coordinates. So we have time t that is equal to 0. We have value of u that is equal to 1.4 and when t is equal to 
capital T, we have value of V that is equal to negative 3.6. We can also write on the units. These are the units. Now, simply we have to take these points on the graph and we can sketch. So we have to take 0, 1.4, 0, 1.4. So it will be here. So we can write on this is 0, 1.4. And the coordinates of this point we can also write on. So at this point, we will have capital T, comma, negative 3.6. And now we need to draw a line and we need to connect these points. So simply you can draw line like this. So this is what you need to draw for this question. If you sketch this line with negative gradient with these coordinates, you will get two marks. Thank you.